Thank you. We appreciate that warm welcome. So right off the bat, we're going to get right off to this. Very first thing we're going to do, we're going to thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, for those of y'all that don't know me, I do that every time I speak to a group. Every time I speak to a group, I do that. Yesterday, I spoke to a small group of business people in Charlotte, and I did not do that. And I was kicking myself the entire time afterwards. People think that I come on stage and say, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because they want pe I want people to look at me and think I'm some pious guy who's always had it together, never done anything wrong, and never made any mistakes. I'm looking at a crowd of people right now who have not always gotten it wrong just like I have, have made mistakes just like I have, and all of you all know the reason why we call on Jesus Christ and proclaim his name is because we need him because in order to overcome our problems, we need to call on him on a daily basis. And we need to give him thanks for what he has given us. And what has he given us? I want you to take a look at this nation that we live in right now called the United States of America. I, you know, I, I'm not one to put words in God's mouth by any, stretch of a ma of, 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 by any stretch, and I do not want to be blasphemous, but I truly believe that God has blessed this nation for a reason. And this is the reason I believe he's blessed this nation. I believe he has blessed her because our founders, our founders had the audacity to sit down and pen these words we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Why is that so important? Because for the first time in world history, there was a government structure that actually gave credit to God Almighty for what he gives us because our rights don't come from kings. They don't come from a Congress or a parliament. They come from God Almighty. And the men that crafted that document, you know, they did it. Listen to this. They crafted a document called the Declaration of Independence before they were independent. Signed it, sealed it, and delivered it to the most powerful king on earth. Before the king said they were free, they declared themselves to be free. That is audacious. That is courage. That is where we come from. And I believe that's why God heard from heaven and said, you know what, this nation's got some problems. I know they got some problems. They got slavery. I know they got some, some, some inequalities and they got some struggles, but I can get behind this nation. And at every turn, I will be there to make sure that whatever problem they face, they will come through. And you know, he has. He's been right there with us holding our hands the entire time. Why? Because there's still a regiment of people in this nation holding on to his hand. Right here in this room, this summit that we're at right now, what we believe in as patriotic Americans who believe in God, Patriotism is not dead. Faith is not dead. And you can best believe God is not dead. And he's still at work in America. The question is, will it you allow him to work through you? Now notice what I said. I didn't say with you. I don't work with God. That's above my pay grade. I work, with the, I work with the state of North Carolina for the people of North Carolina. But we don't work with God. He's not our co-pilot. I don't know about you, but if God's in the house, I want him driving whatever it is I'm on. <laughs> That'd be kind of like saying, hey, Mike, Mike, come on, Mike, Michael Jordan, come on, be on our basketball team, but sit on the bench. It's not how it works. Will you allow God to work through you? And this is what I mean. Let's look at what this nation is facing right now. Look at what she's facing. 
We've got a wide open border right now. Why? We have a wide open border right now because we have a government structure that is more concerned with using our soldiers as social experiments than they are with making sure that you and your families and our nation are protected. Instead of being on the southern border, we've got our soldiers right now focusing on things like uh, how to transition from a man to a woman, how to use he, them, she, and it, how to, uh, I don't know, a hundred other liberal ideologies that they got out there trying to get our soldiers, sailors, and airmen, and Marines to follow. And so our southern border is wide open. We're left unprotected. What God has given us in the men and women who protect this nation is incredible. It is an incredible and storied history of courage. You think about those folks who stood on Bunker Hill. You think about those folks who stood at places like Gettysburg. You think about those Marines on Iwo Jima, those soldiers at D-Day. You think about those magnificent firefighters on 9-11 and policemen on 9-11 and first responders on 9-11. And you think about the thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands who signed up and volunteered to go to places like Iraq and Afghanistan to fight the terrorists there, to lose their lives there, to lose their limbs there so that those terrorists would not come here. The story has a great history of courage, but yet we have a federal government right now that is laying down like a lap dog and allowing our southern border to remain open and refuses to use what God has given her in the strong men and women of courage who are ready to defend this nation. You know, I told somebody this. If I was the governor of Texas, I'd get on the phone and I'd make two phone calls. First phone call I'd make would be to my National Guard and to my state troopers. And I'd say, guys, I need you to come on down here. We're going down to the border. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to defend it. We're going to defend it. And I've already called South Carolina and I've already called Florida and I've already called Tennessee. And just like in the days of the Alamo, they're sending some boys and girls down here that's going to help us defend it. My next call would be to Joe Biden. And I get on that phone and I say, Joe, this is the governor of Texas. We're down here defending the border. You have two choices. You can come down here and come and help us, or you can come down here and go to shoot at us. What's your pleasure, sir? Because if you won't do your job, I'll do your job. Because somebody has got to get the job done. Those folks that say, you can't skip over that. You can't change the course of this or that. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And it calls for strong men and women to stand up and do what's necessary to protect this nation, just like those who came before us did before us. The spirit of the Alamo needs to come back to Texas. The spirit of the Alamo needs to come back to America. Talking about things that God has blessed us with. You know, the United States of America has more fuel under her feet than any other nation on earth. But currently, the current administration has us begging like paupers to nations that despise us to fuel, our, to fuel ourselves. There's people running around here talking about electric cars and end oil and all of this foolishness. Don't realize something. They don't realize something. God blessed us with that oil for a reason. I want you to think about this. Imagine if the United States of America was drilling for oil every place we have and water. Gulf of Mexico, off the coast of North Carolina, and anywhere else we got. We were getting it out of the ground. Just getting it out of the ground as fast as we can. We do it better than anybody else in the world. Imagine what it would be like if we were fueling our allies in Europe. 
Do you think Vladimir Putin would have had the nerve or the ability to make war on Ukraine? Do you think the Chinese would be as bold as they are? They would not because America would be what it's supposed to be, what God wants her to be, which is the leader of freedom in this world. But we refuse to use what God has given us because we're adhering to unwise counsel. Those who believe in what is colloquially called climate change. I have tried over and over again to explain to these people about climate change. It happens four times a year. <laughs> right now it is summer. Soon it will be fall. Then it will be winter. After that, it will be spring, and then the cycle starts over again. That's the only climate change that I believe in. Certainly, we know that our globe shifts, and there are cycles of warming and cooling, but they've happened since the beginning of the time, apparently. Well, other ice ages that happen, I don't think any dinosaurs were looking, going, look, and there's an Eastern airliner up there flying over us. <laughs> hey, that guy that killed Bob, he was driving an SUV. <laughs> Everything the climate change agenda has told us in the last 30 years, every prediction they have made has not come true. Yeah. Why? Because you know, I know, God Almighty has his hand on this world. And there are mysteries on this earth and in this universe that you and I will never understand. Should we be good stewards of the earth? Absolutely. But should we run our agendas and form our policies on pseudoscience? Absolutely not. One of the most dangerous things in this world right now is that this, this adherence the way the Western world is bowing down to the climate change agenda. Notice the nations it is destroying. England, France, Germany, and Italy. Nations that for decades have stood up for freedom and what's right in the world. And the crown jewel in all of it that they want to bow down and be the weakest is the United States of America. The strongest one out there. You know, I guarantee you right now, let the Chinese come over here and take over the United States of America. The first thing they're going to do is head up there to Anwar and get that oil out of the ground. Go down to Mexico, get that, that oil, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, and get that oil out of the ground. We need to start getting that, that, oil, that oil out of the ground right now. Now. Not in five years, not in ten years, not in two years. You know, I told somebody. I don't, all these people arguing about being president. All these people are they arguing about being president. I want to be the president. I, no, no, I want to be the president. Now, if you want to get something done, get a woman. Yeah, I'll get a woman. I just won't get you. Uh, <laughs> belly aching, standing on stage, trying to throw zingers. Meanwhile, our future and our children's future are going down the drain. Now is not the time for weak need politicians with sticker book smiles. I need a warrior in that White House. I need somebody who's gonna stand up and declare the truth. I need somebody that's gonna shut down that border and make us energy independent. Somebody that's gonna rebuild our military. Somebody who's gonna walk onto the world stage and say, I'm from the United States of America, and I'm not here to be your tail. I'm here to be the head. I'm here to lead, and I'm here to lead for freedom and for, uh, for what's right. I don't want to hear one more weak need politician. <laughs> well, do you think they ought to be prosecuting president? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. I want George Washington. I want Thomas Jefferson. I want Sam Houston. I want David Crockett. I want General Patton to come back. I want those people that will stand up and declare to the world, we are not afraid of you. I want people that are willing to look at the media. Yeah, the media. Do we have any of those guys in the house today? 
ABC, CBS, NBC, you in here? Do you hear me? I don't fear you. I don't fear you. You want my head, come and get it. You want my head, you come and get it. I consider it to be an honor to have a head to give for my country. And I'll gladly do it. Why? Because somebody was willing to give their head, their life for me. I look back over the history of this country. And sometimes it brings tears to my eyes when I think about it. Young men, young women who were willing to risk all for concepts they didn't understand like independence, liberty, Barely understood what it was about. But in their mind's eye, they could see a better day in this country for their families, and for their friends, and for future generations. Those young men and women that fought the cataclysm of our Civil War, stood on the fields of Fredericksburg and Gettysburg, stood up at Little Round Top. People who stood in places like Iwo Jima. Young men who rode on Higgins boats across the English Channel. Left home, left the farm, left the job, left the family, left mama, left daddy, left their wives, left behind everything that they loved. Went through all that training, went through all that suffering in basic training and then went off and learned how to be an infantryman and got equipped and went over to England. Never had children. Never had the pleasures of seeing themselves get old and seeing their grandkids play at their feet. They died on the beaches of France. They died on the fields in Italy, in the mountains of Italy. Died in those places, a hundred places in Japan, and those islands in Japan. Why? Why did they give up their lives? Those men and women gave up their lives so that I could stand here right now today. And as bold as they were, standing in combat to give their lives, that's how bold me and you need to be today. We need to stop being afraid. We need to stop being nervous. We need to stop being afraid that somebody's not going to like us. You know, with some people, I want them to not like me. <laughs> Soon as you tell me, Mr. 257 genders, that believe our children should be reading pornography. As soon as you tell me you don't like me, I figure God is well pleased as I am. <laughs> I'm right over the target. I get accused all the time. People say, you know, you might not want to say that because people will think you are crazy. <laughs> I, you know, I, somebody told me the president had transgender strippers on the White House lawn. It does not get any crazier than that. I digress. Maybe it does. Maybe it does. When you think that there are individuals who think that it's okay for drag queens to read to small children at your public library. When you think that there are people that think that it's all right for children to be sexually mutilated. When you think that it's okay for our border to be wide open and for you and me to, be un uh, uh, to not be secure. And when you think that we should not be using what God has given us to enrich us and make our lives better. Yeah. Yes, it does indeed get crazier and crazier as times go on. But we, we need to be the leveling agent. How do we do that? We do it the same way Dr. Carson was talking about. It's time for us to get a spine. It's time for us to stiffen that spine. It's time for us to stand on the courage that those men who crafted that declaration stood on. They knew, they knew that by signing that document and sending it to the king, they were potentially signing their death warrant. 
but they knew what they believed in. They moved ahead. And the legacy that they've left us is courage. Will you join them in that legacy? I know I'm ready to join them. Let's be courageous and save America, guys. God bless y'all all. God bless the great state of North Carolina, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.